Hello traders, good morning uh, on this uh, rather somber day today. Uh, welcome to the, the live advanced bookmap webinar. Uh, today we're joined by Scott Pulsini, a professional futures trader. We do this every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Usually Bruce, uh, our lead uh, bookmap educator, hosts these, uh, but today he's away, uh, is away all this week, in fact. Um, so I'll be helping out with Scott. Yes, Scott has a, an incredible amount of experience and will be um, taking us through some live analysis, providing us with a, a rare opportunity to observe how he looks at the futures markets, uh, which could be on the move today. Just a few things to take care of uh, before we dive in. I've, uh, I've pasted Scott's contact information in the, the hashtag advanced webinar text channel for you. Uh, you can find out more about Scott on his website, scottpulsinitrader.com. You can also connect with him on Twitter, scottpulsinitr1. Uh, general disclosure just to go through here. All bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and is strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. And the risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, Scott, are you here, sir? I see you in the chat. Scott, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, yes, I hear you. How are you? Good, how are you? A little muffled. I, I'm a little muffled? Oh. Sorry? Yeah, you're a little muffled. You're all right now. Crew an iceberg cell CL. 150 contracts. I'll, uh, I'll let you take right. it away then. Um, I've I've got uh, okay. one request for you. Don't quiz me on any on any uh, movie quotes. I, I've seen how you like to keep Bruce on his toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't do that to you. And I actually found <laughs> your opening comment on the markets could be on the move today. That that was I I, I was hoping that was a joke. Um, yeah, they're definitely they're definitely on the move. I almost yeah. didn't do the webinar today just because this is you know this is not a real. I mean, you guys come up from my trades, but it's going to be real hard to teach in this kind of environment. There is a lot of stuff going on, obviously. So I'll do my. Um, so just uh, again, bear with me. I was going to just cancel this webinar because it's, you know, there's. If you make a mistake like yesterday, for instance, I got long NQ at the open, <clears throat> drawing zones lackadaisically and the market uh the news headline hit of course and it sold off like 80 points in five seconds and mm -hmm. i couldn't even get my stop in it, it was it was a huge loser for no reason so the, what i tell my room my trade room is you know obviously mm -hmm. headlines abound i was even thinking that i'm like okay well now that they invaded the headlines aren't going to be that like market moving you know because before there's so much uncertainty whether they're going to invade or da 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 but there's still like just a little bit ago they the new the chernobyl nuclear waste uh, may be disrupted with all the heavy fighting like stuff like that is still coming out so what i tell my room is you know you either accept the risks when you put on trades i mean the the volumes you know is the volume and that's what i'm trading off of but anything can come out and it could just completely ignore areas ludwig levels volume areas right so it's either you don't trade these markets or you accept the risk. It's one of the two. Um, and if you are trading them, you better cut down your size because uh, it's very volatile. For instance, like the average five minute average range for ES right now is 13 points. So 
Speaking of which, I will short this on a retest of the zone 13. So this was some sell ice here. We had some big sell ice right at the open. I actually was long, then I tried to short and I lost that. I made money on the long, lost money on the short. We'll go over this here in a second. Uh, but there was some major ice, sell ice here. That came in. Let's see, it was, it was close to 2000. That was this black zone. You can't see the top of this. That was right here. And then we had uh, this, which was a double whammy. That's the blue zone. And we had a move away, uh, ATR move away retest fail. I shorted it. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. This was this is where I this is where I exited my long, and then I um, I got short here, and then I got stopped out right here. So basically, even on those trades. But uh, I'm looking for a retest, and then the sell ice came in right here. You see another thousand, eleven 1, hundred, twelve hundred. Now I'm looking for a retest. We got an ATR way. Here's your retest right here. So uh, this was 49 down to 33. Yeah, that was an ATR. So the way I trade these, um, right now we're above the yellow lug. So any bearish setups, I look for full ATR retest fail, and I'll get in three quarter or 80% of an ATR. Uh, we still haven't retested that, so I won't take this yet. I want to see this retest this zone, then fail, then I'll try a short here. Um, Again, this is very touch and go trading right now and very risky and very, very volatile. So, um, I'm gonna actually remove so it'd be nice this. size for buys, yes, 159 contracts. You know, like wheat was limiting up overnight. I don't even know what the parameters are on that right now, huh? What limit up even is. It used to be like 50 cents, but I don't know if that's the case. If anybody knows, throw it in the room. I'll be watching the chat too um, when I get a chance if it slows down here, which it probably won't. So, again, this is going to be more just trading because I don't really, the teaching moments are going to be probably few and far between with this kind of volatility, but I'll do my best. All right. So, again, I'm waiting for a retest of the zone. Then, if we move 80% of an ATR, which is 10 and a half points. I will short this and my stop goes 10 and a half points above there. Again, you want to be using some kind of risk uh, risk control. So basically, you know, just for the stop, my, my entry in the stop, that's 21 points right there. And then the, the size of the zone is another, uh, 49, another 10 points. So that's 30 points of risk on, to put on a trade here on the short side. Um, so if you go here and Check out 30 points. Yeah, I could put on a whopping one lot in the ES based on the volatility, but it is what it is, right? I mean, it's things moving, you know, 50, 100 points at a time. So overnight it was anyway. So you've got to adjust your size for the volatility or you will blow out your account. You may get lucky for a while, but you will end up taking on a chin on one of, on one of your trades. So um, that's very, very important. So I'm basically trading the one, one guy right here off of this setup. So again, I'm waiting for a retest of this black zone here. There you go. The ATR is up to 14. Yikes. That's now 11 and, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half points now below here. I will short this if, if it comes back. You know, if it, this, this move below here, was a full ATR that disqualified this um, this zone as a uh, potential bullish setup. So hold on a second, forty eight. Let's see what this is here. Forty eight fifty. Thirty eight thirty seven fifty thirty seven. That's where I will enter this trade. And then my stop will go. 80% of an ATR, which is 11 and a half points above the top of this zone, if I get filled. So what I was trying to get at is, you know, we were bounced, we, we put in the sell ice, this zone here, and we never got an ATR below, above there, and then we did get an ATR below. So this disqualifies this as a possible long, only only a potential short until something new comes in. So let's see what happens here. some trades in gold earlier there's some awesome stop runs and i was just getting ready and watching set getting set up and missed a couple of these trades but there was stop run stop run stop run and 
I missed a lot of these trades, but you can see it, the last the last stop run was 400. That's this white zone, and it's kind of holding in here. Actually, I could potentially trade this now. Let's see where we are on the lugs. Um, you guys have my screen, correct? Yeah, okay. Oh, I was saying, share my screen. So you see, yes, we're just bouncing around this yellow lug. Was, again, these are Ludwig levels. I use them in my trading. They're extremely, extremely powerful, especially if you can use the real-time volume and knowing what to expect and using these you know, for support and resistance, so on and so forth. So we'll go over some of that logic today. But anyway, we're holding the directional yellow right now. Um, some in interesting things to note when you draw new lugs. First of all, it should hold, um, and you know, again, her, 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 uh, it's proprietary, whatever she's using. But <clears throat> the bottom line is, when you draw new ones, you expect a tag of the blue, and if that doesn't happen, that's telling you something's up as far. And we did it; we didn't tag it twice, and now we're above the yellow. Above the yellow, so expectation is to go tag the red, right? You should not be seeing bearish setups now, just like down here, I'm sure there were probably bullish setups, right? So, or, um, yeah, bullish setups. When you're expecting to tag the blue, you shouldn't be seeing bullish setups. And I'm sure there were some down here. Again, this is the middle of the night. Uh, but now you're you're seeing a potential bearish setup. Um, so then I'll change my tune, right? So right now expectation is red lug, but if this holds and moves lower, I will still get short. And so hopefully that makes sense. It doesn't confuse anybody. So I wanted to check out gold because I may trade this. Uh, all right, so this was actually a trade that I missed, another trade that I missed. So I trade. So again, if we are below the yellow lug, I will take short setups aggressively, just straight at 80% on the zone, I will get in short. Above, I will take long setups aggressively, right? So I was I was ready to take that that um, long on that ES aggressively, but it never got 80% above there, above that zone. Now I'm willing to short it. So if it, we tag one of these major lugs, red and blue are the major lugs, support and resistance, I will get in along aggressively off if there's a setup right at the lug, and that's exactly what happened here, as you can see, this white zone. So it looks like I'm gonna get another chance. Um, so this range from 1939 down, down to 1934. right here all right something just came out this is what i'm talking about guys these headlines are uh well, at least i didn't get filled on the short <laughs> all right so the red lugs up at 80 so i'll be looking to short aggressively up there if this moves up to the um let's just go back to yes for a second if this gets up to this red lug at 81 baby lugs at 68 and a half these are, these are names we use in the room, by the way. They're just like minor minor targets. You can see the target line. And then 81 is the main target. So if we get up to here, which it looks like we're going to, um, and I get a short signal, I will short that aggressively. If we rip through here and build new lugs, then I'll be looking for long setups. So we'll see what goes on here. Uh, so gold. <clears throat> ATR is, I'm sure it's, that's not really, sorry, five minute, 50, 50.8, so 51 ticks. So we put the 51 ticks in the middle of the spreadsheet. 41 ticks at 80% of an APR. So once again, I can only trade. S&P stop, stop by ES, 506 contracts. All right, so it looks like we're heading up to that red log. I'll get there in a second. First of all, let me cancel this order. So again, I was going to short it. That is now, that idea is now done. We've gotten an ATR above this zone. And it looks like we're headed to the red log up at the 84. You can see, here's one of the reasons why we're rallying, because 
we talk about this every webinar. Here's the big money, and they will get the market to fill their trades, and then we can go down. So and that'll be perfect because that the red lug's right up here. If I get a signal, once these guys get their fill and get their way, then we, we're free to go back down. And here we go, straight to the liquidity. Um, if you guys, if you're new to these webinars, the liquidity is just big orders in the order book relative, right, to the other orders. And again, mo common sense tells you, well, all these people are willing to sell. I want to get short. It's actually the opposite, right? These are this is the big money that wants their fill, and they will push the market into these orders to get their fills. And like I talk about every webinar, I know that for a fact because that's exactly what I used to do when I was a scalper, big scalper, and I watch other people do it all day long as well, <clears throat> including locals. Euros top 60, 169 contracts. Locals, which are just like the, you know, guys that trade for prop firms and trade for themselves, and then also the big, the big money firms. They, it's all a big game. But, the, you know, what I tell my room every day, and, and I've told you guys that before, it's like, if you can't beat them, join them. It's, it's a huge game. These markets are completely manipulated. But if you know what's going on, you can benefit from it, right? So that's what this is. This is, we will touch this. We will tag this liquidity, and then hopefully we get short. All right, let's go back to gold here. All right, so we said ATR was 80% was 41 ticks. So that would put me at... I'm going by the last two digits here. So I will go along this. I will go along gold at 1943. As long as this doesn't get, if this gets an ATR below here, then this is done as a potential long signal. And then I will look for full ATR retest failure to go short. <clears throat> Hopefully, if we build new logs. Again, I don't mess around with these lugs. I wait for the new ones to be built. And you can see we're still at this this uh, the blue lug here so if I'm waiting for the new lugs to be built then I'll trade that to the short side that's that crude craziness touched 100 bucks last night 100 and even more should be swell for gas prices coming up and we're just so this is the kind of stuff that with Ludwig levels, right? You use it as basic support and resistance. Blue levels down here, but you can also determine by how it reacts. Stocks GC, 248 contracts. When we build new lugs, I'll come back to that. Let's see what's going on in gold. See the stop run right here, 219. Gold ice PC, 176 contracts. It's a pretty big zone there. Just making and this two ice ice for cell and Q, 151 contracts. Gold ice PC, 156 contracts. Alrighty, again, this stuff's crazy, guys, so just bear with me. I'm on one screen trying to draw these zones. It takes three minutes just to draw the damn zone. All right, so you can see here. Gold ice PC, 152 contract. This is NQ. We got some cell ice. This is the first step. Draw your zone and figure out your zone, and then we're going to check out the lugs, and then see which way we're going to trade this, potentially. S&P Ice Iceberg Cell ES, 709 contracts. Right. Hopefully we're getting up to that. Hey, look at that. First panel liquidity filled. Shocking. Never, I've never seen this game before. This is next. And hopefully we get up here. Red lug, cell ice comes in, short it, and watch it go back. Again, paper's got to get their fill first. They run the show. Um, so again, papers, big houses, like, you know, big funds, stuff like that. All right. So let's check out the lugs here. We may be able to short this here. 
So we're approaching red lug here too, right? So this is gonna be, we're almost here. Multiple, two, iceberg by alerts at RT, congrats. All right, so if this can tag this red lug, I'll short this set up an NQ aggressively, meaning 80% of an ATR. ATR is a sweet 62 points, 62.3, so 63 points. Gold stops QC, 209 congrats. Gold's getting just hammered. Russell Ice for by alert at RT, 151 congrats. Gold right. Ice QC, 150 congrats. Right, I'm going to focus on equities because that's a gold is kind of hard to keep up with, and we're approaching some important areas here in equities. So we'll just watch this. So I think that may be a tag of the red lug, and I'll be able to short this setup. 80% of an ATR below here. S&P ice iceberg cell ES. Aggressively. 700 contracts. Liquidity band number two, hit. Another shocking development. <laughs> it's the same thing every day. So you can see 700, 700 came in here. S&P ice iceberg cell ES. 711 contracts. That's exactly what I said I wanted to see, right? Which I was expecting. Fill the liquidity, then paper comes in selling. Look at these icebergs coming in. This was 700. This is another 15, 1600. Let's just mark up this, this one here first. That's that. That's that. All right. Back to the drawing board. 14.57 is the ATR, which is very low. 80% of that is 11.65. So I'm going to say 12 points below here. So 12 points below here, I will short. This is right at the red lug, right? That's 77 and a half, pretty much. That's made 65 half. And all I can trade is one because the volatility, right? Ready to short that. This also, ATR is 63 and a half. And this one, I'm going to be risking like 100 points plus, so 50, 51 points below here. I can. So this is the way I trade these zones, guys. I mean, you can say, we talk about this every webinar too. You can say, you know what, I'm not waiting for 51 points. I think the minute we get below the zone, I want to short, right? Or I like waiting for get back in the zone and at the top of the zone i give it a shot and i'll just stop out an atr i'll get in right at the top of the zone all, all those are potential you know you can trade these how you want to trade them that's this is the way i trade them after watching them for two plus years right three years actually so you know if i enter this trade i'm entering 50 points below the zone I have to put my staff 50 points above the zone. That's 100. And then the zone is another 40. So I'm risking 140 points on this trade. I don't even think actually I can put this trade on. That's when you go to your risk calculator. I highly doubt I can put this trade on. I'm filled on uh, ES, by the way. Um, yeah, I can. You see, like when it gets to 200 points, <laughs> that I can't put it on. You know, and I'm fine with the, the risk per se. Like you may say, 140 points, that's ridiculous. Well, this thing's moving. It was down what 500 points overnight. Like that, that's not a lot in this market environment. All right, so let's put this in. Uh, that's sick, basically 60, 59, 400. This trade. So 13. 359. Get my little one guy up there. Uh, so the gas, uh, the crude number's coming out here in five minutes, too. 
Actually, no, I take that back. It's natural gas crew comes out at 10 o'clock central because there was a holiday on, uh, on uh, Monday, so they move it to Thursdays. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's get my stop in. 14.82 uh, is the ATR. 5 now, so 12 points above here is my stop out. That's uh, 95.50. All right, so that's that trade. So again, Lud Ludwig's, this is exactly what I called was probably going to happen, right? There you go, the magical lugs. The United States hasn't seen Russian forces move into the western part of Ukraine. We got the cell ice here. Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, so look where they got their fill, like we called. Cell ice came in, like we called. Bumps right off the red lug. Now I'm playing for one of these. If I if something bullish comes in, then I will trail my stop. Or if a new a new setter comes in, I'll trail my stop and potentially add to this trade now. So let's, let's see, what, see what happens here. Uh, let's see if there's any questions in here. It's not the right room. I'm going to find the chat. If right, you guys got any questions, fire them in because I can see the chat. I'll answer them the best I can. So, you know, this may take some time to get through the, so, you know, this was cell ice that got smoked. Cell ice that got smoked, cell ice that got smoked. It may bounce off of here. It's probably going to do one of these, one of these, and then this one, and then finally give it up. But, you know, I'm hoping it goes right through here, but I doubt it. But I'm not getting out, you know, especially for my risk, I'm not getting out right here. I'm playing for at least the yellow lug, depending on what happens down there. So the yellow lug is at 30, 32, three quarters, All right? Uh, I don't. I don't look at lumber. Sorry, Alan. I do not trade. Lumber. Soybean ice ice for by ZS. One hundred sixty-five contracts. That's actually one market I have never traded. I've traded pretty much every market, every futures market, except for lumber. I don't think I traded like this. I think milk's one of them, and there's another. Uh, there's a couple commodities I haven't traded, but yeah, I don't trade lumber. Um, what was that? That was. See what's going on. Good old soybeans. So I missed this trade earlier. This was or this setup. This was 200 ice. Now you can see another. This is big ice coming in here. So let's mark this up and we can potentially trade off of this. I just don't want to be in a short and get caught on the uh, limit up. So if you guys can tell me what that number is, that would be great since I don't have that information in front of me. Again, I should know it, but you don't see it very often. All right, so this is the first step. All right, mark your zone. See this ice came in? This thing's moving like crude oil. Goodness. All right, so that's that. Check out our lugs. So we're right at the yellow lug, obviously. So no matter which way I trade this setup, if I trade it, since we're right at the yellow lug and we got a little bit below it, I need to see full ATR retest failure, full ATS, ATR retest failure to trade this. If this was above the yellow lug and it came down and got back out, I'd get in 80% aggressively. But right now, since we got a little bit below it and we're just bouncing around it, 
I'm gonna be prudent, especially on a day like today. So that's the second step. Third step is what's your ATR? It's hit 7.91. Thanks. 7.91. That's pretty elevated for beans. So basically, I need to see eight points either way out of the zone, first and foremost. Okay. I need to see 85 retest failure. I'll get in at 80% or down here, 8 cents retest failure. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, so you can see this is kind of struggling at the zone. This is the buy, the sell I zone. I got smoked. So that was to be expected. If you can get through this second zone, well, first of all, I'm going to keep a real close eye on this. I may just cover this at the because the yellow lug's right here. This gets in here and starts to struggle. I'll just get out of the trade and wait for a new setup. All right. Surprise, I haven't heard anything in crude. And again, the number's coming out here in a half hour. Uh, wheat. Yeah, I watch wheat. Wheat and wheat and uh, beans are my main two. Eggs. I don't trade corn because it's like a pain trade most days. Uh, wheat was the one that was limited up overnight, so I don't even know what it's at right now. I think it still is actually. Yep, limit up. So whatever that. Let's see if we can figure this out. What was the closing? I don't know what they base it off of. They base it off of the Globex open. That's like 60 cents. So it used to be like 50, I think it was 50 cents. So it looks like it's 50 or 60 cents. So anyway, you can see we're just limit up, right? So you don't want to be short in that because there's been instances, never happened to me, but other friends of mine, traders that were like short and it just opened up like limit up like for days in a row. <laughs> so you do not want to be going short up here. There's nothing really to see there. Move along. We did not get an ATR above this zone yet, so we don't know what this setup is. It's either going to be a Titanic setup, meaning buy ice comes in, holds the market, and goes, or it's going to be broken ice. If we get an ATR below there, that's broken ice setup. Again, one of my six setups, there used to be five. We have another setup we've added called Step Brothers, and that's uh, when you get buy ice and buy stops in the same direction or sell ice and sell stops in the same direction. That's been a pretty profitable setup as well. All right, what's going on now? What's the news now? So just like I said, right? You kind of learn the learn the games and the and the routines watching these every day. Remember I said we'll probably struggle in this on a little bit. We'll do this, then we'll come down here, we'll probably do this and this, and then it'll finally give it up. But I was hoping we can rip through this first zone from before this. So remember the, the retest failures, all it is is the whole theory behind it again, because I used to be a big trader with it when I would get smoked. I would pray for the market to come back in that area and I would peel out of the out of my trade. And that's what is driving that is the retest failure, the logic behind it. So I wasn't willing to cover that on just on this small of a profit, right? So, you know, if this turns around and stops me out, then it stops me out. But I'm looking for at least down here forty one thirty for my trade. <clears throat> did I get filled in NASDAQ? No, I did not. Did I put my order in here? Did I put my order in? Guess not. 
That definitely would have been filled. Well, here's a retest, so still can go short. I still will. 64 points is the ATR, five minute ATR. 80% that's 51.2. I could have sworn I put this order in. So 50 points below here, and 51 points is 60, 59. Did I not put this in here? That's weird. All right, let's try this again. That. <clears throat> Not to get filled on that, so I'll be short both. <clears throat> These over here. And this is stick strike. This is basically telling you the speed of the orders coming in and the size and it's an algorithm and it goes from 1 to 15 you can see the gauge here so if you have it on one it's super sensitive so you can see here on this on this page all these are set to one i record this actually I'm, i forgot to record these today but um, these are all set to one i don't have the sound on but you can set them from 1 to 15 it just tells you how how, how you know how the orders are coming in the other thing i watch is this edge product from uh from taz this is really important. You want to be very careful when you see, you know, green or red above. This is the 67% line. You can see here. So these are all the stocks in the S&P 500. They, you can also set it for Nasdaq or Dow. That means they're all above their five-minute market profile, aka TAS boxes. And you want to be very careful. Like, like if, say, if green comes up here, you want to be very careful initiating longs when it's overbought because you get the reversion all the time, as you can see. I mean, this was overnight, but it always reverts. So you want to be very, it doesn't mean you just blindly take the other side of a trade, but you definitely want to be very aware of that. Uh, it's a, it's very handy. As you guys saw last week, I didn't enter a short because we were oversold and it would have been a loser, right? So I keep an eye on that. Um, so you can see very quiet in the stocks. All right, I'm filled. I'm going to be a sweet 140 point risk here. So ATR is 51, so I could put my, I don't like this, <laughs> I don't like this liquidity here because same reason why we saw ES went and tagged all the liquidity, but that's pretty far away, so I'm okay with it. I'm sure, sure there's some down here somewhere, yeah. All right, so what I will watch now, I'm <clears throat> definitely watching the yellow lug here in both of these if we get down there. Thirty thirty three ish for ES and thirteen two for NASA. Can you see how powerful these Ludwig levels are? Again, you guys you can get these, just go on our website, lovewithlevels.com, get the three day trial, it's free. Try it out. Say you saw it on the book map webinar and she'll have some special stuff for you. I don't know exactly what she's doing, but I know she does something for the book map people. <clears throat> these things again, they're the this and the volume are the crux of my trading. And these are the most Powerful things I've ever seen, especially when you can see it. I actually didn't even see this when I put this trade on or when we were talking about this. So we're talking about reversion of the mean. Well, we were also, here's VWAP. Here's one standard deviation of VWAP. That's called the daily value area. Here's one and a half. Here's two. We got basically two and a half at a red lug with a bearish setup. They don't, the setups don't get much better than that, right? And you can see we're right off there. So what I actually could have done, I could have been way more aggressive and I could have shorted right in that zone. So this is what I'm talking about. You can have variations to how you trade these. I should have done this up there because there was some, you know, what they call confluence, right? There were so many things going for this trade. I could have entered right in the middle of this zone and been way, way more aggressive on this trade instead of waiting for 50 points out of here. All right, so the minute the sell ice came in, right here. So when I did this, and it got back inside here, I could have shorted it right there and then just risked an ATR above there, which would have been, you know, I'd only be risking 50 points instead of 140, right? Instead, I waited for, actually, I thought I was in right here, but it retested, failed. 
So this is what I'm talking about. You can come up with different methods to trade these, especially at important areas. This was a very, I should have been aggressive here, right? Because again, red lug, VWAP, uh, deviation, standard deviation, and a setup. All right, so this is my expectation down here, 254-ish. We need ES to get through this zone here, and I'm gonna be watching this, this prior zone. This is like 2,000 cell ice. You can bet it's going to have some problem getting through here first time, so I will cover. That's where the yellow look is, too. So. Let's see if there's any questions. Do you also use POC and VMAP? Uh, I'll look at uh, point of control on my market profile, which we didn't really look at today, on my composites. The thing is, there's really no composites here. This is well, we could build this one. So how, how do I build these these blue zones, right? That that what color, whatever pink or red, whatever this is, these just mean these were a long time ago. Um, so if days overlap, then I merge them and build a composite. So for those of you that don't know market profile, pretty simple stuff, right? You, this this is the day of trading, so you can kind of break this out like this. Right? So this was that day. So we were talking about this in the room the other day. Now this was having a trouble holding inside of this prior composite, right? Got here, failed again, closed right here. Yesterday, tried to get in, failed again. That that is a, that is a sign that value is going to be moving lower, right? So anyway, you know when these when you merge these together, this is just the one day traded, and then the lines are basically it's the value area, right? So this is where seventy percent of the trade occurred throughout the day, or sixty-seven point whatever it is, 67.5% of the trade happen from these price inside these prices, right? So when you have multiple days that merge, you can, or that overlap at least 50% of the value areas, then you can merge all the days, right? So, so we'll do right now. Merge that. Merge that. And build a deposit. So I will pay attention to pointed controls of composites, not single days. You you can you know you can use whatever you want, but I, the way I trade it, I look, I watch pointed control, and obviously tops and bottoms are very important, right? So if this does find a way to get back up here, you want to watch this thirteen seven for one of those, right? I think we're just going to come straight down, and this was like, you know, three years ago, two years ago, you're getting down to these territories. And you can see here in the bigger picture stuff. <clears throat> This was a zone. This was an important zone. We didn't get quite there yet. Maybe finally we may take one more shot at it. I'm hoping anyway, now that I'm short. Um, so this was this zone was drawn. This was the high volume note of this balance area. This is a daily chart, mind you. This is like a month of trade. We broke out, came back, we retested the high volume node, which is just the middle of a balance area where usually the most trade occurs, and you can see it bounced, it bounced, and then launched. So this is directional conviction. So this zone is really important. So I, if we come back down here again, this may bounce again. If this gets through this, then it's going to be really ugly. So someone asked in my room last night on the, the moves down last night, is this capitulation? And I said, this is nowhere near capitulation. When you see the ES down three to 500 points, then you'll know capitulation. All right, so just bouncing around right now. Yes, is just having a problem getting through this this zone, but I will hold it. Nasdaq, same thing. Not at a zone, but uh, yes, longer term stuff. <clears throat> you know, anything can happen here. This is kind of no man's land where it could rip back up and, you know, revisit some of these prior areas, like way up here. But I, you know, with what's going on, that'd be, that'd be pretty mean move, even with the short covering, which Spot Gamma claims that's just what all the big, the big moves upwards are right now. Um, and you can see we're basically holding inside this dude. That's where we stop. But I mean, we could rally back up but we can also come down to these areas here. And that's what I'm expecting. But again, you come up with a thesis and then you 
you know, you try to trade that way. If something changes with the volume, which is the most important thing, real time buying, then you change your tune. Crude numbers in 15 minutes. See if we can get it up to 150 bucks. That'd be great. Great for gas prices. Uh, why don't you look at POC on Bookmap? I just there's a, I have enough on my charts on Bookmap. I I, I I like to have separate charts. It makes it cleaner, easier on my brain. I don't like having 85 things on a chart. I mean, we already have enough on this chart as you can see with the zones and the liquidity and everything else. So. So what happened in beans? Did I miss a trade? Not yet. So we did get an ATR above here, right? We were looking for eight points. Is that right? No, no, six, six points. ATR 7.42 in there. 7.42. Yeah, we were looking for six points. We definitely got that, right? Now, if this retest fails, I will go long. Remember, this is right at the yellow load. Fails it, and I'll go along. That's my expectation. That's 90, 93-ish. So again, I need to see this retest. I'm sorry, seven and a half was the full ATR, but that got seven and a half points out of there or cents out of there, right? Yeah. So then, if this retest fails, I'll go along six points above this zone. I'll go along at 83. You know. Play it up to the red lug, to that 93, and maybe higher. They can bust through there and build new lugs. <clears throat> all right, Nasdaq's coming all the way back up. That's just that's what you got to expect, guys. Again, if you don't like the headlines, you don't like the volatility, then just set out the you know set out the rest of this week, and hopefully it'll start to settle down a little bit next week. But there's no reason to, to crush your accounts in this kind of trade that is very unpredictable. <clears throat> going on now so I can answer some questions. Thank you, GTE. GTE is actually a room member and he's always pointing out setups, lugs, everything. And that's what I want the room to be. You get enough people doing it, no one ever misses a trade, right? No one ever misses a setup, lugs, so on and so forth. So thank you, GTE. So no questions, huh? I guess I'm that good of a teacher. All right, so this is gold. So ATR in here is. NQ stop stop by NQ 160 contracts. Right, five stops against my position. Could potentially trail this. This is right in that prior zone, as you can see here. Only 160, but that's enough for today, I believe. I'd like to see more than that, but today is pretty volatile, so. So I can actually trail my stop a little bit down because of this new setup. Not much, but save me a little little coin if this turns out to be a losing trade. <clears throat> so the way we do this is now the top of this zone is at 37.50. Here is to 69. It's just nuts. 69, 55 points above this zone puts me at 82, 82 half, 82 three quarters. So I can at least move this down a little bit, not much. And 20 points. So, you know, normally, hold on one second, I just got to move my stuff on this other account. Pronouncing the word from the top of the hour, where we see the release of the weekly EIA industry, so 
Um, so the, you know, the way I do this, this still may happen, right? I'm not going to add to this trade because it's basically in the same exact spot as this new setup occurred, right? So we had the sell ice. This is what we traded off of, right? And then this came up, buy stop just fired off in the middle of this zone. So I'm not going to add to this trade. Bruce, Bruce likes the idea of it's okay to add to it because it's, you know if this turns into a short setup, then you have you know dueling two short setups in the same area. You know, I agree, but you know I, I need to. I don't want to have too much risk on the same area, so I don't like trading that way. Now, if this moves lower, you know, so say we start to sell off, and then you get another setup here. All right, so say we sell off and we get something down here. Well, now I'll trail my stop to an ATR, three quarters, eighty percent of an ATR below this new setup, and then I can actually add to that trade. You know, for both. We'd probably still be above the yellow. 60, 361 contracts. Well, I'll check out your order in a second. Um, but I can add to it and then trail my stop based on a new setup. The point is, that's what I did with this. I trailed my stop, but I'm not adding to this setup because it's right in the middle of the first one, right? So hopefully we'll get an opportunity. I'll show you what I mean if this thing can start to sell off. <clears throat> Let's check out your so Bruce claims they don't show icebergs in here anymore. I don't know when that happened because this was, I don't know why either. He was supposed to let me know because this is a CME product. I don't know why it would be any different, but it doesn't show ice. It just shows stop runs. So you could trade just off stop runs, right? It's like, and this is either going to be a dumb and dumber or a stop and hold. Let's draw this zone. Pretty, pretty tight zone for 300 plus stops. So threshold in, in Euro is 100, meaning I, I won't, I'll trade, I'll potentially trade anything over 100 in the setups, anything less I don't pay attention to. And obviously each product is different. Um, so that's step one. Now let's take a look at our lugs. We're right near the blue lug too, right? We're not quite there yet. So I'm definitely not gonna short this setup into the blue lug because I know how powerful thing, these things are, right? So I won't short it, but if this turns into a dumb and dumber, meaning stop the dumb money puke and then it turns around and goes the other way, uh, I will trade it, but I still have to be uh, conservative in my entry because like here's your setup, we're below the yellow lug, so I need to see full ATR retest failure, then I'll go long. If this stop run happened at the blue lug, then I would be aggressive, but it's not down there yet, so we'll see what happens. Four seventy five ticks. All right, I'll keep an eye on that. I don't trade euro very often, so all right now here comes a sweet rally in my face. Let's see if we can hold this. <clears throat> Not looking very promising. Let's see what's going on. Yes. Back to the zone. So you can see how, I mean, these zones are, you know, golden as far as, you know, you can see the market reacted in this zone twice. I wasn't willing to get out right there because this was not enough profit for me for what I was risking. But you know, even when I'm wrong, I at least like to see the reasons I'm wrong, right? So it's like, okay, well, this didn't go because this zone was strong enough to hold this thing where this ice got ran over the first time when it came back. It couldn't get through it. Now we're back up here. So. See, I guess stopped out there. Here is up to seventy. My goodness, seventy and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, 
actually move this up a little bit if I wanted to. So I can go 80% of a 70 is 56, 56 half. So I can go 56 half above there. That's 93, 94. I'll move this up a little bit, but I'm not expecting much. I'm going to put it up again because the ATR changed. I don't usually do that, especially on my stops, but the ATR did, did change. I put it a little higher because I just put it above that spot gamma level. So again, my original stop was up here anyway, so it's not a big deal. And you can see all this liquidity. This is what I was afraid of when I put the trade on. I said, oh, yeah, I forgot. I didn't see that. So these guys will get filled. They'll get filled. They'll get filled. And then we'll be okay to sell off. That's the most likely scenario. I hope I'm wrong, but probably not. Yeah, I'll come back to gold. I want to see what's going on. So we're getting a retest of that zone in beans. Right? You got your ATR. Here's your retest. Three quarters in ATR. I will go on. I'm sorry. So we changed. It used to be three quarters. Now it's 80%. So ATR is 7.04. 5.63. So five and three quarter points out of here. You can see they're starting to buy these stocks now. So I'm almost certain to be stopped out of that NASDAQ short. Um, what did I say? Five. Six points is 83, 82 quarter, 82 three quarters, sorry. That's where I will belong. If I get filled the red lugs, I get 93. So that's where I'm, that's my first target. I guess everything's okay with the world though. Let's, let's go ahead and rally or short covering. Either one doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for my position. What the reason is? <clears throat> See what I mean? Like, look at the look at the PNL. I just of course it's going to be the exact tick, guaranteed every time. Um, but look look at the PNL. I lost there. Just that was just a one lot, right? So that's how volatile this is. So if you guys aren't willing to trade that volatility, then just you know find another market. All these markets are pretty heightened volatility, obviously, but not like this, right? Oh, it's just every, you guys should hear me in my room. I mean, this happens every single, and you saw me move, move the stop too, right? So it doesn't matter where I put this thing, that's the exact tick. Is that not amazing? 10 times a day. Look at that. <laughs> All you can do is laugh. It's, it's just that ridiculous. I, I literally lose my mind sometimes in the room because of how often that happens. Like, how is that the exact tick? So my stop was up here. Then I moved it down here. And then I'm like, ah, oh, let's move it based on the current volatility. And then it stops me to the tick. Like I tell my room, this is the one thing that gets me. I can handle losing. I just can't, I just can't accept that that can happen that many times to me over my, you know, 20 plus year career. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, let's see if there's any questions so I, before I break my screen where do you get the ATR um, that's just the uh, think or swim um, it's just the default All right so you can I think it's called wilders so this is basically this is just their default I don't I don't usually mess with stuff I, I like to use the default and it's fine it works fine for me so it's wilders you can google it look it up 14 time period uh, so it's just looking at obviously the last five minute or 14 five minute periods gold ice pc that's about it 100, gold ice pc 150 contracts <clears throat> so i am thinking about coming up with a, with a new system where if i get stopped out like this i gave it one more shot so meaning because it just happens so often, I'm just so sick of watching it and then watching the trade work, right? So it's like, if I get stopped out, if it moves like, you know, five points away or 10 points away, whatever, I'm gonna come up, because I gotta come up with something because I'm just, I can't watch this this many times every day. 
um, where I just I give it one more shot and then I just put it right back there. And because if it comes up again or just maybe just above it, I'll, I'm going to come up with a system like this because this is just ridiculous. I mean, look at that in this market and this volatility. That is the exact exact price. Exact. <laughs> Was it the spot gamma level? I thought I put it above there. Oh, that's annoying. All right, still on the still on the ES. You can see. Look, look at this range. What are we ranging? Zone to zone to zone. And I'm hoping it does that. It goes to zero. You are not alone. Stop to the tech. I, again, ask members of my room. This is not me just bitching and complaining. It happens literally ten times a day. And I, and I know these algos are set up for the ATR and percentage of the ATR, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't matter where I put it, right? So if I would have put it 100%, 110% of an ATR, that would have been the high tick. If I put it at 70%, that's the high tick. It's just, it really gets to me. And when you watch it that often, it just really gets to me. All right. If this struggles up here, I'll, I'll put this back on. I'm only going to risk maybe 10 points. All right. So I'll put that back on. So quit is going to get filled. So this is probably going to be a losing trade. And again, I don't usually do this, but they gave me an opportunity. So I give it a shot for 10 points or 15 points. It's fine. <clears throat> Very volatile. Um, so what? That was the, the crew number came out and it was nothing. I didn't even hear anything. It's kind of strange. It's supposed to come out at 10 o'clock, right? All right, so we're down to the blue lug and uh, Euro now. Let's see what crude's going on. Just dancing around the yellow. Another bounce off the red here. Let's try to get above the red again. So. If you guys watched that webinar I did with Pamela Ludwig when I was asking her questions, it's been posted many times. If you don't have it, just scroll up. It's, it's in this room. She talks about how if you you know you get above the red and you don't draw new lugs, that is a very important sign, especially if you start to motor down. Like it, did, it means it didn't hit the requirement for new lugs, and then it gets back below the red. A big trade. So I added, adding back on work so far. I don't know, this does not feel very good, but again, I trade what I see, not what I feel. So I traded what I feel. My, my Literally, my intuitions are almost probably 80% wrong nowadays with these algos. So that's why you just get them and you follow your system. Because if I were to trade off what I feel, I'm wrong 80% of the time, if not more. All right, so filled in beans, long. So now my stop goes ATR 7.25. You can see it right there. Make sure we got the right. So that's 5.8, so six points below the zone. I'll stop out of this trade. So 7450, 7850. I'm sorry, 6850. That's my stuff. And then I'm playing for the red lug. That's my first target, or my main target. believe that there's nothing going on in crude i guess there's just there's enough action in there they don't care about the number now i guess so all right 
pretty quiet. Let's look at the internals too. We haven't looked at that yet. This is the VIX, basically just ranging, kind of like the markets right now. So if this busts higher, then stocks are going to sell off. This is the ADD, advanced decline line. We started out at trend down territory. Anything under 2,000 usually tread down. You can see it bounced. So let's see if this can make another move down. And then this is the synthetic. Um, this is all the FANG stocks added together. And this is the, what they're doing. Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Tesla, Google, Facebook. from rip your head, head off trade to nothing going on. All right, what do you guys got? Where are the sellers at? Keep an eye. We talk about this every webinar. Is this relative volume? And you can see why it's choppy. And this is normal. I mean, it's not bad, but for a day like today, considering that you can see here, like this is not real good volume for a day like today, where you want to see this popping two to two to three times normal here, and it's kind of hanging around one time. So that's why you're getting this chop. Okay, look at that. That's why it's choppy. The algos take over when they know there's no big money play. But like, look at overnight here. <laughs> I, this is the most I've seen. Again, this, this relative volume is basing it on this exact time period, that exact time period for the last 30 days. You can see this. There was one bar here that was like 30 times normal right here. That 28 times normal. So this is what I expected to see now, and you can see that it's just dying now, and now, now it's ranging. And as it's coming all the way back. Alrighty. Any other questions? Where can I find them? Ludwig levels. Yeah, it's, it's in this room. I posted it. Scroll up. I can see if I can find it here again. I'll post it again. Hold on. Or did you already post it? Is that it? Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. So watch that. That's a that's very informative, very straightforward. Again, I don't ask you know any technical questions. It's just how do you read this? How do you read that? So there's no way I'm not going to get stopped out of this just for your information because anytime I break my rules. Or, or do something different than I should. My negative, re so negative reinforcement is obviously when you do something wrong and you get away with it. When I do something wrong, like I never re-add, I mean, again, it's 10, 15 points, not a big deal, but there's just no chance. My negative reinforcement is zero. I lose every single time, which you should, right? That's the whole point. You don't even want, you don't want negative reinforcement in your trading because then you'll do it again, right? Because if you get away with it one time, you'll do it again. And then you'll do it again until you get burned. And then you're like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I can't believe I didn't get stopped out there to the tech. That's shocking. So 
So I'm going to hit stop. But... All right. So B just coming back. Guys, if you're struggling in these markets, it, it's not a big deal. Turn it off. Turn it off. Wait till you know next week. Wait till the weekend. You know through the weekend. Wait till things settle down a little bit. You know the war will be still be going on, but it won't be like this shocking. All these headlines flying out, right? There's just no reason to give back a ton of money in this kind of environment. It's just too unpredictable, right? I mean, we've seen. I got burned the other day twice. Once in gold and once in Nasdaq. Um where a headline, I, the trade was working perfectly, headline comes out and the thing just rips the other way and I, and I get smoked, right? And that, that's gonna happen. And, and these, it's all, it can always happen, but it's you're really opening yourself up to it happening right now. So why, why risk that? Why risk what you've earned? Or, you know, if, you, if you've made a bunch of money lately, why risk what you've earned? If you're struggling, why go deeper in the hole and, and ruin your confidence in these clown markets? Like this just, some of these moves are just, you know, you can't predict what's going to happen. This is just a ugly range algo fest right now. That's all it is. Let's watch my negative reinforcement that doesn't exist. The only thing I got going for me is paper got their fill right here, but they're up here too. So this is probably going to rip up, fill all these dudes, and then second half of the day, that's when we'll have the sell-off. They need their fills, they, they need their fills at the best prices. Right there. This is the main one. Again, be careful. So you see how this liquidity is just popping in here right now? That's not liquidity I look at. I talk about this all the time too, right? These are just algos or someone trying to scare the market away. I'm talking about this kind of liquidity. That's been in here all day, all night, in the open or or longer, right? This is liquidity I'm talking about. That's the magnets. Don't be using liquidity that's popping in and out of the book because you're gonna. It, has, it means nothing. It's just games. It's spoofing. Even though spoofing is illegal, I'm using air quotes because it still goes on nonstop. Right? Euro stock 60, 232 you awake over there, Tom? I haven't heard, haven't heard a peep from you. You looking up your movie quotes? Still there? Talk to me. <laughs> it's, a, it's Sam. Just, just keep <laughs> Oh, Sam. Did I call you Tom? Sorry. I, I assumed Sam. you were talking to me. Um, no, I, that, I think... That's probably, yeah, that's probably a way to respond right away. No, I think and this is really good I stuff. In, uh, in tricky conditions, you know, you... Uh, and even though you got stopped out, whatever, you're, you're demonstrating discipline. Um, you know, you adjusted to the market conditions, uh, reduced your size. And uh, I think this is the, the lesson here. It's it's kind of the, the professional way of thinking that probably many retail traders are lacking. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, you still, you see, I can still take a beating with, even with one lots, right? So, yeah, you cut down your size, or you don't even trade. Look at this sell ice coming in here, right? I mean, this buy ice. So look, look at this four nineteen. So what this is going to do? This is this is probably these offers are probably this buy ice. So they're trying to prop it up to push it into there, right? And then they get filled on all this, and then we can finally sell off. That's the game. And you could be mad, and you could say these markets are manipulated, which they are. You know, like like we were talking about in the room the other day, even Fed members can trade, which is unbelievable to me. I don't even going to be going on that rant. They have to disclose it. Well, who gives a shit? Pardon my language. Who cares if they have to disclose it? I mean, how can fem, Fed members that decide policy, how can they put on trade like that? I don't even get me started. So anyway, th this is all a big game. It's all manipulated. You can either complain it's manipulated or you can figure out what they're doing and join them. Right? It's one of the two. If you, you know, if you can't get over the fact that it's manipulated, then you got to find another profession. So here we go. Huge sell ice. I mean, buy ice. I fully expect this. So the, what can, this could still be a bear setup, which is good. These guys can get their fill. It wouldn't be a full ATR above here. And then this thing can break. And then I'll go short. Let's see if we built new lugs first and foremost. Hold on, what am I doing here? 
should be stopped on my ATS too, right? Because you know, everything's okay with the world. There's new logs ES. And then MQ. And logs here as well. So what this should do, right? This is what I'm talking about, how you can come up with your thesis, especially on the on the fly, right? This broke the lug. We built new lugs. This needs to hold yellow. Worst case scenario is prior red. Right? If this gets back below here, something's wrong and we're coming down to at least there which I think is what's going to happen. One again, once this liquidity gets their fills, then we're going to be feel free to sell off. But this somehow, some way, continue to rally, then here's your target. 13.7. Does that sound familiar? Did we say that 13.7 was? That was something else. I mentioned that price earlier, but... Oh, that was the market profile, right? There you go. Boom. Boom. I don't think it's going to make it up there. That's just my opinion slash thesis. But again, I don't trade what I, I don't. It doesn't mean I just throw on a short, right? I mean, if I get long setups, I'll trade it and I'll say, okay, I guess we're going to get up there. But, you know, if we do make it up there, I fully expect that. But I think we're just going to mess around. I think that liquidity is going to get filled here. And then I think we're going to do that. That's what I think. Doesn't mean again, I'm trading what I see, but I, you know, I, I just think that's going to happen. But if this turns out to be a bullish setup, so now because we built new lugs, I need to see either way I trade this now. There's no aggressive entry. I need to see a full ATR retest failure, full ATR retest failure, and then I'll get in either way. Right? So again, I will take longs. I don't want to, but I will because I trade my. This, you know, you got to be systematic about this. You guys are going against algos. 85 plus percent of the market are algos, right? They don't change their, how they, they're not changing what they're doing because how they feel, they don't feel, right? They have their set parameters that are put in and they follow them. And that's what you need to do with this stuff, right? I'm telling you, I had some of the best intuition on the planet at one time as far as scalping and understanding order flow and stuff. 80% or more of what I feel or what I think is going to happen is usually wrong, right? So it's like, that's why, you know, I, I always, who doesn't have an opinion, right? But I don't let my opinion affect the way I trade this stuff. You might, you can ask my room. I say it all the time. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll get long here. It doesn't feel good, but uh, you know, this is telling me to get long. And then the thing rips to 50 points. And I'm like, okay, that's why I don't trade what I feel. I trade what the market is telling me. And this is telling me this is huge buy ice. This should hold. This should rip. If this fails, something's wrong, and I'll get short. Let's watch the liquidity get filled in this rigged game. There you go. There's one band. Here's two bands. So you get this a lot too, like. If it'll, sometimes it'll run away first first try because these algos, there's algos that are set up to, to pick this stuff up. They see there's big size, so they run it away, hoping that these will, these guys will chase. These guys aren't, aren't chasing. They've been sitting here all morning, all night. They're not chasing anything. But I'm just saying, many times if you're say you you know you say you were long and you're like watching this liquidity and, and it comes real close and it st you start to see the cell bubbles, well you can get out of a couple because you know th they'll get filled eventually. But sometimes it does this and then it comes back. That one just filled. Here's number two. Let's fill number three and then watch the thing die. Yeah, that'll probably be throughout the afternoon, but this, guys, this is the game. And this is what I'm talking about. Don't pay attention to this liquidity. This is someone just trying to, who do you think this is? I'm going to say this bid is whoever this offer is. So they put a big bid in and they scare it right into their offer and then they're out and you'll see this pull. This is the game, guys. If you know the game, it makes it so much easier. Even when you're wrong, you can at least say, okay, well, this is why I was wrong. Okay. I know there's buying the stocks, but what do you, what do you think? Was, so actually, I'm going to find this. One of my room members posted this. There it is. We'll put it in number three. This is really eye-opening when you watch this video. Let me see if I can find it in my room. I'll post it with Jim Cramer before he became mainstream, talking about how he would just manipulate the market all day long in his hedge fund. So if you don't think that's what's happening, that's what's happening.
and there's been no setups up here either. So well, first of all, I'll look for that in a second. Let's see. So this is 27. We're not even close to an ATR above here yet. ATR is uh, 66. So because we're at that, we built new logs. We're at the yellow log. I need to see 66 points above this, above this um, top of the zone. So I need to see 93 trade and then retest failure. Oh look! Oh, I didn't see that. Look at that. My bad. We got to fill these two as well first. Then we can sell off. My bad. Let me find this article. You guys will like it. Or this video. Whoever's on, whoever posted that in my room, if you're on this webinar, post that for me, will you? Because I can't find it. I got to go back through like 100 messages. Hold on a second, guys. It's worth the wait because you'll just listen to this. You're like, are you kidding me? Like, then you'll understand what I'm trying to tell you. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, you already posted it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was sitting there scrolling for five minutes, but yeah, watch that. If you don't think this stuff's manipulated, he's really you know, he's talking. He talks about manipulating futures too. But again, guys, this is the this is the game you're playing. This is why having book map is the most important thing you can have, and this volume information because you can see what they're doing. Or you have a pretty good idea of what they're trying to do, and you can see when they're wrong, and you can see when they're right, and you know the areas that are important, right? Just like yes, yes. Right, came down to that area. And I even said this may just hold this, and it did, right? If you know your areas, you could have said, okay, I'm got, I got, I got to move it. Hey, hey, that's 18 points. I'm, I'm good with that. I'll get out right there, right? Point is, you know the areas. Because of the paper, that's what Bookmap tells you. What do we get? A, do we get a tick stop out here? Number ten a day, so this would only be number two. Pretty close, at least the one a couple ticks above. All right, guys, I'm kind of run out of gas. There's really nothing going on yet. I mean, there's no, there's really no signals. We had the one, and we tried to short it, but I'm not sold on this continuing to rally. But you know. If we, there's been no new signals in here, but I will trade this this NQ to the long side if we get an ATR above here. Okay, Scott, uh, you ready to call it? You're running out of gas. Yeah, one second. I'm just I wanted to show him something there. So if this trades again, ATR is 66. If this gets up to 90 something, we probably will fill these guys retest fail. I'll go long. Um, but if this fails and does not get an ATR, and then we get ATR below here, retest fail, I'll go short. Right? This is a really important zone. You you will see the big move today off of this zone, with, is what I'm expecting. This is you know 420 buy ice in this in this area. So key off of this zone, and just be patient, and be careful, guys, because it's very very easy to get smoked in these markets. And there's no reason to throw away your money in uncertain. Trading is uncertain as it is. Then you throw in this nonsense. Then you're, you know, I don't like, I don't like not having an edge, right? And when the headline comes out, your edge is out, out the window. Let me see if there's any other questions, and I'm gonna hop off. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's that's one of the kind of key key lessons here is remembering you can just sit out if you don't like the volatility, just preserve that capital. You don't have to trade. Right. That, I mean, that. right. That. That's the whole idea of being a trader, right? Be, do, being in this profession, you can dictate when you trade or not. You can say, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm not messing around on this nonsense. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to go hit golf balls, whatever. I'm going to just work on my trading, turn off the screens and work on, you know, set up stuff like that, right? You don't have to participate. That's the, that's the beauty of being an independent trader. You decide when you want to work, right? Yep. All right. Uh, so no questions, not a lot today. Just a couple, a couple losers, but to be expected in this market environment.
Okay, Scott. Well, um, thanks for joining us. I uh, appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Um, I I really find it interesting listening to your thought process and your, your kind of systematic approach. You know, uh, it's I think it's what separates the kind of retail from the professional. You you really stick to your rules. Um, you know, I, I think we all get frustrated, but the difference is you don't necessarily act on your frustrations. You kind of just chill and laugh it off. Where I'd be kind of chasing the market around, but um, yeah, no, it's it's great, it, great stuff. Yeah, I mean, I do get upset. Obviously, you guys hear me with the tick out all the time, and that does. But I don't start doing stupid stuff, right? Like I just don't start. Trust me, I've gone through this for twenty plus years. I used to do stuff like that all the time, right? And as you get, as you learn these market, you learn how to trade, and you know, you learn how to control your self control. Like I don't have great self control sometimes, as far as like breaking screens and stuff. It doesn't happen very much anymore, but it still happens once in a while. But what I don't do is just start throwing in orders haphazardly, right? I'll take it on the chin and I'll move on. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean I can't complain about it. Ask my room, but that that's my way of releasing my stress, right? Because if I were to keep everything inside. There's nothing wrong with with showing your emotion, right? All, all these trading Truth psychologists. Top sells CEO. Top sells CEO. One hundred fifty-five contracts. All these trading psychologists, like Dr. Brent and stuff, say it's the worst thing you could possibly do is hold in your emotions and act like it's not bothering you, right? But there's ways to get it out without damaging your account, right? And my way of getting it out is just basically bitching, your talking to them. Because <laughs> if I don't, my head will pop off. We talk about that too all the time, so. Okay, right, guys, something fired off and crude. I, it's not a ton, but uh, keep an eye on that. And otherwise, I'm really watching the zone in NASDAQ, and I will trade. Other than that, I will see you guys uh, next Thursday. Hopefully, it'll settle down by then and be normal trading again. Uh, just be very careful. Don't throw away money for no reason in this environment. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks.